owner came from the back and she was like, uh, if you really want a Manny, you know what I mean? You just got to pay my price, but I don't think you want my price. And I, I don't think I wanted it either, but she said it and she said it so loud and it made me not want to be a cheapskate. And I said, all right, bump it, I do it. And she started, you know, we went through the man and everything. And when it came down for my nails to become a color, for seventy dollars, I'm not going to do clear. Like I don't give a fuck. Like I don't <laughs> care. So this is where the black nail situation was first. Welcome to the Friends and Beauty Podcast a safe space for ambitious beauty industry creatives to have real talk, get real answers, and practical tools to grow their businesses. My name is Aquia Robinson, and I'm a makeup artist, beauty educator, and the creator of Friends in Beauty. I created Friends in Beauty to support like-minded creatives, just like you, on their quest to connect, network, and build genuine relationships within the beauty community. Join me every week as me and my special guests reveal the keys to success and longevity in the beauty industry, and most importantly, have fun while doing it. You ready? Hey, what's up? It's your best friend in beauty, Aquia Robinson. Welcome back to another episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast. I am so happy to have you here with me, and I hope you're listening to this episode in high spirits and in good health. If you are a friend in beauty, I welcome you to join the Friends in Beauty Facebook community. If you're looking for a community of like-minded, ambitious friends in beauty to virtually connect with, network, and share resources, then click the link down below in the show description to join our community, and I'll be there to welcome you with open arms. Additionally, follow Friends in Beauty on all social media platforms at Friends in Beauty. What I like to do is something called the Friends in Beauty Friday feature, where every Friday, I spotlight a different friend in beauty and their accomplishments. No matter how big or small you think it is, I want to shout you out. I want to send you some good vibes. So all you have to do is use the hashtag FIB Friday feature and tag friends in beauty on something that you have accomplished. And I'll share it with the community. Also, the Friends and Beauty podcast is available on several platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Google, you name it. Wherever you are listening from, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into the Friends and Beauty podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time to tune into me and my guest, and we would love it even further if you took the time to leave a five-star rating and review to let me know how you feel about the podcast. Also, join the Friends of Beauty mailing list tribe. I send out different resources throughout the week. And the Friends of Beauty mailing list tribe is the first to know about all things Friends and Beauty. So if that's something that you're interested in, the link for that will be down in the show notes as well. And lastly, share this podcast. Share the Friends of Beauty podcast with your other Friends in Beauty, your family, your friends, Anybody that you think could benefit from the information being shared, share, share, share a way to help me grow the Friends and Beauty community. Now, today on the Friends and Beauty podcast, I welcome Nintendo to the Friends and Beauty guest chair. Nintendo is a nail tech based in the DMV area who went viral during the pandemic for not only doing nails, but for shattering the gender and orientation norms that usually come along with being a nail tech. Doing nails was never something that Nintendo saw for his future, but after getting kicked out of the Navy, coming home, trying to make ends meet, and then losing his job again, he was presented with an offer that he could not refuse. He put his pride aside and in turn stumbled across his passion and literally hasn't taken any days off ever since. It was such a pleasure interviewing Nintendo. We talked about so much that this had to be a two-part interview. And what I loved about interviewing um, Nintendo was his transparency. I didn't have to pull anything out of him. He was just so open to share everything. He shared his story so openly and so freely and... I'm just truly inspired by his hustle, his passion, his perseverance during the tough times. In this interview, Nintendo shares his humble beginnings growing up in D.C., how his journey as a nail tech began, what it's like being a black nail nail tech, how his family and friends responded to him wanting to do nails for a living, and then all of the trials and tribulations he survived to be where he is now and so much more. It's literally history in the making, and I'm so happy to be able to share this interview with you. Be sure to catch part two directly after this, and if you're listening to this interview right now, you might want to meet us over on YouTube to see our beautiful faces. Let me not keep you waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and jump into this interview with my new friend in beauty, Nintendo. Enjoy. Welcome to the Friends in Beauty podcast, Nintendo. 
Man, Man it's a pleasure to be here. I swear it is. It is Long a pleasure to come. have you. Thank you. Definitely. Um, I came across you because we haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, but I came across, um, I think, a post where I don't even know. I, I know I have the post somewhere, but I think you were featured on like ABC News or something like that. And I came across that post and I was like showing everybody like, look at this nail tag. Look at him. Like, was like I was showing everybody um, your picture. So I knew that I definitely had to have you on the podcast to really get you know, an idea for your story and what inspires you and everything. But before we jump in, I want to start off with some icebreakers so I can get to know you a little bit more in the friends and beauty community to get to know you too. Absolutely. All right. So first one, give us three random facts about you. Um, I'm a cat lover. I love cats more than dogs. I love cats. Um, oh yeah. I got one cat. I done had her forever. It's a weird story. I got her. But we've been rocking forever. Um, the way that Ninja Turtles view pizza, that's how I view spaghetti. So I could be victim to eating anybody's spaghetti, but I just love spaghetti. So shit, they come with what it come with. And um, I like anime. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can see probably the aesthetic of um, my vibe and, and just like, you know, my style and everything. But um, anime is what really inspired me to, to do a lot of the shit that I'm doing right now. So weird inspiration, but it comes from a weird place and um a lot of shit that i do comes from a weird place so they kind of um go and cousin together you dig so that's three fun facts about me oh can i give a four sure i'm a nerd that's another thing too a lot of people don't realize man, all right man i'm a nerdy motherfucker like i might give up the i'm yeah i i'm a pisces but the the attribute of the hard on the outside soft on the inside is um as me you know what I'm saying? I have to be hard to be able to take on the bullshit that people bring. But if you if you hit the right buttons, you get a whole different me. You did nice, nice. Um, what do people always tell you that you're good at? Um, I do have to get the game. Like if, if there's a situation where um somebody needs to talk to get out of it. <laughs> that would sure. be so sure. um and I, I i take that i take that one very seriously because um every time and you know I, i've elevated in life there's always been some type of a precursor to making sure that that attribute in my life stays sharp so um take for example when i got kicked out the navy in 2013 i was on um on boat restriction for like 60 days and there was this cheat when everybody was just like oh uh, he's just like this you know, they just couldn't deal. And I was, you know, you know how people get when you're exiled and it, the association is, you dig. Um, this guy really put a lot of books in my hand. And that was at a time where I thought reading was boring, but I had nothing else to do in my time. And um, it's ironic that Fred Hampton has a, um, a biopic out now, but the book he put in my hand was The Assassination of Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was 21, 22. And our lives correlated. He spoke for something and I didn't speak for anything, but I was in a situation where I spoke up for myself and I made sense and it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. So instead of me just taking the L's that came with leaving the Navy, he sharpened the tool that came with my mouth. So that would help me later on in life. You know what I mean? You might not need it now, but let's go ahead and do what we kind of do now to lay down the foundation so you don't have to do it later. When he put that book in my mind and to see the biopic that came out, it um, it took my mind to a whole other place. You know what I mean? I was already inspired by the story, but it made me want to do things like how I'm doing with you. Mm -hmm. This allows me to really get my intellect out. I don't like to really talk as much, but you're allowing me to speak. A lot of people want me to talk. You know what I mean? I learned that from Fred Hampton and that book. And the biopic, you know, you know sent it on to a whole other level of inspiration but um i just had to throw that one out there that that's definitely something that um that really is is is, is, a, is a big part of me is my mouth it got me in a lot of trouble but mm -hmm. once it was sharpened so the gift of gab is definitely that one thing you know what i mean i just had to get a breakdown sorry to talk so much oh it's no it's perfect i love that i love the explanation because i'm getting to know you so yeah. that's that's perfect i love i wish i had the gift of gab like <laughs> i don't have it um, so I'm going to pull a random uh, icebreaker. So I have these things called pod decks and I have a what the heck deck and I have a would you rather deck. So which one you want me to pull from? 
<laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Okay. What set of items could you buy that would make the cashier the most uncomfortable? What set of items could I buy that would make cashier uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. um, bacon bits, Italian dressing, condoms, and salad. No, and romaine lettuce. <laughs> so that was coming out of the conveyor belt. She'd be like, would I have to explain what that is about? I am like, what's going on over there? All right, bet. So um, I like salad. That's my thing. Like, you know what I mean? And I like bacon bits and just Italian dressing. And that's it. And romaine lettuce. Mm -hmm. Condoms is because wherever I'm going, because I'm doing that, nine times out of 10, I'm with somebody I'm talking to. Right. And they understand the correlate of that snack. And I'm gonna practice the safe sex. So that will all kind of correlate with one another. And if I could add something else, it would probably be like, what the F? But the condoms is what will make it what the F. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like a random. Sense. So please don't throw the vulgarity at me. I'm not a vulgar guy, but I had to answer the question the correct way. <laughs> That's cool. So For the sure. next icebreaker is how many tattoos do you have? I don't have a lot. I um I covered a lot of. I swear to God, I covered a lot of areas that most people probably wouldn't go for first. But um, the areas that you get respectful, I don't have covered. Like um, my back, um, I have half of my torso done, and I don't have my legs. I've seen guys that don't have any neck tattoos, no face tattoos, and have their entire legs done, and they are considered tatted. And I can understand why, because of the pain that it goes through to go through that. You know what I mean? But I'm getting up there. Trust me. I Take just try. I would definitely. We're not done. We're not stopping. I just want to get the the hard areas out first. That's in my mind. Just get those areas out first, and then focus on the areas you can't see. All right, all right. Next one is: if you could give a piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Mm. There's so much I would say, but that's crazy. Um, be slow to speak and quick to hear. There's been a lot of situations and from where I am now to where I wish I could go back in time and correct that if I just shut the fuck up and just listen, everything, the answers was right there, but I was so emotional at that time. And I was so emotionally driven to prove to people that I wanted to be or wherever it is in life, you know? Mm -hmm. That shit really threw me off. I was really emotional. I was an emotional guy. I was really, I was a really emotional guy in the past. And it wasn't until somebody really sat me down and, and helped me to uh, be control of those emotions. I started making some really ethical, logical decisions. You know, mm -hmm. I started thinking with certain body parts you did. And that's that's not the sexual, but if you um if you think with your mouth too much, you put yourself in situations where you probably have to listen a little bit to get out of it. If you think with your ears too much, you wouldn't have not said anything to now have to put yourself in a position to speak up. You know what I mean? So everything has its balance. It's not one sense over the other. You know what I mean? So that's what I would tell my younger self. Like, like be slow to speak and quick to fucking hear. You know what I mean? And you'll take it all in and not be as emotional because everything that's supposed to happen is supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Whether you like it or not. And that's what it is. It's kind of hard to get that when you're young, but I'm about to turn 30 in a couple of days. So hey. it's hitting me like crazy. Awesome. Or happy early birthday. Thank you. March 15th. I think we're a little, a little super early, but we're creeping up in those. Uh, we're creeping up. Pisces season. So I'm, kinda, go. I'm an Aquarius, but you know, Pisces, y'all come after us. So I got to get it all Anything after Pisces gets crazy and crazy and crazy so <laughs> right. i think we can relate yeah yeah so last one last icebreaker if you weren't doing nails if you want a nail tech right now what would you want to be doing damn i wish i could be a rapper mm -hmm. because i feel like after doing rap shit i would have been bumping shoulders with people that would have taken what makes me rap to another level there's intellect that has to come with rapping. Mm -hmm. and you have what it takes to have, well, no, I ain't have what it takes. If you have the charisma to move in that social circle, 
you could get up. You know what I mean? So I wish I, um, you know what I mean? I wish I had the opportunity to, you know, pose as a rapper until they realize I'm something else. And then we accolade up from there. So, you know, that's what I wish if I weren't doing theirs. But fuck that, I do nails. So. I know that's right. <laughs> so. Well, thank you for sharing. I think this is like the best icebreaker uh, session I've ever had. So, so detailed. And I learned so much about you in that little bit of time. So thank you for, you know, sharing so openly. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So let's go ahead and jump into the interview. I want to know, where are you originally from? Um, I am originally from Washington, D.C. I was born in uh, Columbia Hospital for Women, that hospital. This is for all you birth child women. So oh, was I. There you go. That hospital is not in existence anymore. But um, I was born there. Um, my mom was, uh, she was raised in Northeast in the Brooklyn area. My father, he was raised in Northeast as well in the East Capitol area. Um, my mom was the mom of 10 children that uh, aspired to just want to live the Maryland life. So when she attained that as a mortician, she made sure we did. So we spent, you know, I know I spent a lot of my growing up on uh, East Capitol Street where, um, on my father's side, my mom just, just dropped me off to be watched. But um, we lived in Temple Hills. Um, I went to school in Temple Hills and uh, Allenwood Elementary and Crossland for um, a stint, but I graduated from Woodrow Wilson Senior High School. Cause you know, it's crazy. My ninth grade year was I was introduced to Woodrow Wilson Senior High School. My middle school, I went to the C public charter school. Mm -hmm. You dig, like I was one of the first 500 kids that came to that program. That program really, that, that program really shaped my teenage, believe it or not, that boarding school program was dope. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it still exists now, but what it did for me, you know what I mean? Coming from where I was coming from, like, if you wanted to go to private school, it's a lot more, so it's a lot of people that want to go to private school and they people just couldn't afford it. You know what I'm saying? So when the charter school systems came at that time and allowed kids that, might not want to go hard in the street. We might, we might not be that. Like that's you. You want to do that? That's you. But I'm, 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 I'm something else. I like to paint. I like this dance, sing. That's my shit. You know what I'm saying? So if there's a program that could cater to that, where I don't got to get my head blown off, then that's what I'm gonna do. And programs like that, and Year Up, and Urban Alliance, those were programs that shaped me to become the professional that I am now. To this day, I would never run to the streets. Uh, solve any financial problem that I need because those were the programs that were just thrown to my community that a lot of people didn't take, you know, serious. And I took it serious and I benefited. And if anybody that's from those programs that I just named know what's up, then you know what's up. Mm -hmm. You've been shaped. Like, you didn't, like, it's okay you ain't take that route. You know what I mean? But, damn, I'm glad I took it. You know what I mean? Because now I feel comfortable to speak on a platform like this where I'm not giving you a whole bunch of Ebonics. I'm letting you know I'm in I'm, I'm intellectually inclined to just talk to you because these people gave me um, programs like the um, Toastmasters. They gave me etiquette classes. They gave me things that, okay, I don't have access to, but if you could drop your pride and let them teach you without thinking you didn't have less of, you right. became it. You know what I mean? So tattoos and all, I embody that. But for my city, my city made sure that I had what was needed to at least become come out of that. You know what I mean? So if that answers where I come from. Yeah, because I'm not from Temple Hills. I, I can tell you that. I can tell you that thing. I'm not, but I, I would take that if that's what they say it was. If you see, right, that's cool. But this swag, this this what I am. No, I'm from D.C. and you could tell, you could smell it on me all day long. I don't got proof to nobody. You just got to be around me to get it. You did. That's so but. funny because when I was going through your page, like preparing for the interview, I told my friend, I said, he is such a DC guy. <laughs> like he is such a DC, you know, cause I'm from DC. I'm born and raised in DC. I actually grew up in the Brooklyn area um, and everything. And my niece went through the Europe program. My cousin went through the Europe program. A lot of the things that you just named. So I totally get um, and I'm familiar with East Capitol and all that. So I totally understand like the area and the, the dynamics of 
like the city. So that's why I like you. I think you're the first person from DC that I'm interviewing. I've had people from yeah. like Maryland and we both know that's not the same thing. You're not no. from DC if you're from PG no. County. There you go. So this is this is really cool. Um, sure. how did you how did you then jump into okay so you went from all of those programs. Where did the Navy come in? So what happened is the Navy <laughs> came before uh year up and uh the Navy came after Urban Alliance. Um, so the Navy came when I graduated from Woodrow Wilson. I stayed out about maybe uh, maybe six months to a year, just in that, that 18, 19 age of, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got a little job and I know my mother on my ass about getting out of the house. Cool. Um, I took the ASVAB. I scored about a, took, I scored about a 55. And the only job that was allowed to me at that time was a, a CS. So um, I got the job. I was like, well, I'm on my mother's house. All I said was I was in the Navy. She was cool. She didn't really look into the job, but I was out of her house. Dig. And with me, it's all about opportunity. I don't, get, I don't care how big or small it is. If you give me this much room to breathe, I can make life out of it. And that's what the Navy did. I got into the Navy. And for three years, I had a ladder career. Everything was straight. But I had a little deep dark secret. I, um, I was addicted to synthetic marijuana, K2 at that time. Mm -hmm. um, now, as you can see, it's something way different. But at that time, it was advice for people that was in the service that smoked weed. I smoked weed all the time. Um, I came into the Navy super clean, but, you know, I'm not a bad guy, but I'm not no angel either. And I'm always going to be in the mix. So what was popping? What we doing? Mm -hmm. Hit this. I hit it. And I'm like, whoa, this ain't weed, but I can get it from here. And if I do it this way, you'll just... Me getting this quote unquote contraband, I had it down to a science for years. And there was one particular time where I got a little too comfortable. And um, I came from a, um, a tour and uh, I went back to my car, did my little normal thing, but I didn't even realize before I had parked my car, I had to put my car in the shop and I got a new sound system. And it didn't even dawn on me when I got back to my car that the novelty wasn't even there because I didn't even appreciate it because as soon as I got it, I had to be gone. I forgot. I got in my car, my car felt totally different. I'm like, I got money in my pockets, payday, let's do this. I went to my spot. The spot that you go to is like a gas station or a smoke spot. Mm -hmm. But these spots are designated spots that you're not supposed to go to. If they want to go on camera and they see you, you will still get hit for even just being there. It was a no-fly zone, basically. So this particular day, got what I needed. And I, I don't know what I was thinking. I went, um, it wasn't on base, but it was on base barracks. And I parked in the garage and I um, I lifted all of my windows down. I brought all my windows down, lifted everything up. And my music bass, I started wiping my car down. I don't ever do that. It's a Honda. You know what I mean? I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the excitement or the, that the fact that I got all this new shit coming out of this or, and, um, I turned and the police, well, two police officers is walking towards me. From my eyes, from, you know, what it looks like or what I was smoking, that shit is crazy. It looks like they're drawing down on me. Mm -hmm. But all they were doing was probably checking their pockets. Yeah. When I looked, I probably, I looked and I just kind of ran off a little bit. And if you just start running off when, at that yeah. time, this was before, this is pre-Trayvon Martin, you know what I mean? This, that ain't even happen yet, you know what I mean? So at that time, they're like, fuck, what are you running for? Like. And I realize I'm running, but I'm running up. Uh, you know how those park garages and you running, it's like, where the fuck are you going? You, like you're going up. How can you, you know what I mean? And I stop and turn around and they're already looking at my car. Everything that's there is probable cause. There is, it's your red hand. It's nothing I can do at the time. My hat was blown. I wasn't even high no more at that time. I was like, fuck, are you serious? Mm -hmm. So uh, make a long story short, you know, they cuff me, take everything, you know what I mean? I go back to the ship and they uh they try me right there, cap this mask, bust me that, bust me down, take everything, take my benefits, anything that comes with you leaving the Navy, you're not, you're not getting that. You're done. Wow. Period. So I was on the ship for about 60 days. So that entire time, that time that I was spending, it runs into what I was saying about my mm -hmm. gift gab with that mm -hmm. guy that told you dig. So mm -hmm. that was also a training period because when I got off, it was a whole other world that I wasn't even embracing yet. So fast forward, 60 days go by. I um I get off the ship. I have about $1,500 to my name. My mom doesn't know I'm, my, I'm not out the Navy. And my girlfriend, she at that time, she knows, but 
I don't think she prepared for the burden that's coming with that because she's banking on, on marriage and security and everything. I don't think she banked on this one. Yeah. So when I got back, let's just say that didn't work out. And um, let's just say fast forward two months later, my mom still didn't know I had got a job at Bonefish Grill. I would cry every day at work. I just knew like, how the fuck did I get here? So I was, but how did I get here? And um, I'll never forget the day that my mom just was like, she called me and she said, what you doing? I said, I'm at work. She's like, you at work? What you mean you at work? What do you mean you're at work at eight? Like at a time that I would normally say I'm in the barracks or whatever. Yeah. And FaceTime wasn't out at that time. So it was more like Skype. So my mother hit me on that joint from the iPad and seen it and I broke down. Two months of holding on to a lie. Yeah. Like I'm at a two month lie. Like niggas can't even hold on to a lie for a couple of weeks. But two months, yeah. you can see it in my face. You can see the stress. And um, I went back home and my mom is a mortician. So she got me a couple gigs at some funeral homes. But I was at a funeral one day and this lady was like, um, you like computers? You look like you be liking computers because I like to fix the sound stage. It's the fucking sound stage. Sorry, it's the sound <laughs> stage. You know, you look like you like computers. You would, you should go to this program, you know what I mean? And I got the program and I heard, I'm like, well, I got home and my mom brought the program up again. On paper, I just told you, I had the last little bit kicked out everything. On paper, I look poor. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that was my ticket in. If they wanted to just use everything about my name, I just had to drop my pride and let them know I'm poor. Yeah. They bang with it. But I had some driving wits enough to go through it. And when I went through, or well, let's just say when I got home, I went through the year program, told them everything I had going on. It just kicked off from there. I um, graduated and got a, um, an, uh, what was an internship with Blackboard. From Blackboard, I moved to Deloitte. From Deloitte, I moved to a private sector um, company out in Lando called Artex, and I got cocky. Somebody hit me up and was like, yo, we putting the 18 together down in the Department of Labor. Just come in and, and just put your bid in. We're going to make sure you hire Mm-hmm. I went in there. I didn't even realize that I've been smoking so much weed. I don't. It's so much with my background going on, but I just thought these. You know, I, I I didn't. I wasn't thinking. Before I left for that interview, I put my two weeks notice in, and I went for the interview. Got it. They called me back. Said some with my background, and they needed to do a urinalysis on top of that. And I just knew I couldn't got the job. As much weed that I was smoking and everything, like I just no, it's no way. And when I got back to work, they had already filled my position. And that was in a day. So um, I left work early that day because they wanted me to show my job to somebody else. And I just was like, well, I can't do it. I haven't even been saving money like I was supposed to. What the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? So I left work early and I went to Iverson Mall just to go get some snickerdoodles. (laughs) And I don't know what didn't. I usually park up top, but I parked under the tunnel. I don't know what the fuck made me park there. So I don't know why I didn't normally park upside, but I went down bottom. Went down bottom and I passed uh, um <laughs> I passed the snob, I mean I passed the nail salon called snob nails. And um I was just being fresh that day. Like I I had, you know, I ain't had shit to lose, but it ain't every day you see the caliber of women that was in that shop that day. And um uh, I just never forget, I just walked in and just inquired about a manny and a petty. And the nail techs that were employed at that time was like, you know, we don't do that here. You know what I mean? I looked over, it was a pedicure chair there. And there was hell a lot of gel polish in that joint. So I was like, I don't do regular panties and pedis, gel better than hell. And they broke down to me that each station, you know, they had their individual booth rent, but it was a it was full set of acrylics that were selling. You know what I mean? And that's all that they were doing. Long sets whatever came, but at that time, I didn't even know that Instagram nails was a thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, fuck is a full set. All right, cool, but yeah. I'm frustrated at this time. So I'm like, damn, I came in here and made a fool of myself. And then um, the owner came from the back and she was like, uh, if you really want a Manny, you know what I mean? You just got to pay my price, but I don't think you want my price. <laughs> and I, I don't think I wanted it either, but she said it and she said it so loud and it made me not want to be a cheapskate. And I said, all right, bump it, I'll do it. And she started, you know, we went through the man and everything. And when it came down for my nails to become a color, for $70, I'm not going to do clear. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. <laughs> so 
this is where the black nail situation was birthed. That's and um, she painted my nails black and she wrote a design on it. She was like, nigga, you really about to wear this? I was like, you ever paid $70 for a manicure before? And even she was like, no, nah, I've never. And um, at that moment, that's where I kind of got an understanding of um, paying for somebody's work. Um, she was like, okay, so, you know, basically like, you know, like what you do for a living, woo, woo, woo. And I was like, uh, you know, I told her I had just lost my job. And she said, why don't you just do nails? Room got quiet as a mouse. I mean, it got quiet. I got quiet. Everybody got quiet. And I said, uh, well, I do it. Like, like, tell me more about it. But yeah. you know what I mean? I got nothing to lose. I literally just lost my job. So at that point, she, you know, she wrote down on a piece of paper how much it was going to cost for her to teach me how to do nails, but how much it was going to cost for everything. She said, if you give me this by the end of the day, I'll teach you tomorrow how to do everything. I ran to the ATM and I gave it to her. She said, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I came back tomorrow, had a little hoodie on my head. But I just ain't going to be seen. She put a petition up. Five hours later, we was laying acrylic. And we was laying it. I mean, we it was late. She was looking at me. We both looked at each other and just yeah. said, you were really serious. I said, I didn't even think I was serious. She said, so you going to sell it? I said, I have no idea. All I know is, is if I put this in the right person's house, it's going to bite. She said, I know. Instead of doing that, why don't you rent that table over there for me for 200 I said, you know what? Let me run to the ATM real quick. She said if I came back by the end of the day, she would, um, you know, she would just, she would take it seriously. But if it was anything after that day, she wouldn't have did it no more. So um, I ran to the ATM, like right then and there. You know what I mean? When I told you how much money I had left to my name at that time, I uh, ran to the ATM and um, I took that out and I gave it to her. And she was like, are you serious? I was like, I, I think I am, but shit it gotta work because like it's no way how i'm set up right now i can't even continue with it and my shit with it was i was getting that shit like tatted on my neck like there's a window sign here and i got that shit tatted along with some other window shit so that when i went to interviews they would only ask me windows based questions you know what i mean they wouldn't ask me nothing else they see that on me they like oh you must know it yeah i studied these so let's go ahead and get through it because i know if i get through this Nine times out of 10, you're going to wave your analysis because we're going to go to the lunch bonding on some window shit because they like window shit more than the other shit. Yeah. So it worked every time. I knew I couldn't use that this go around. You know what I mean? Everything was just, it wasn't a pass on like it was. When I came from Europe, it was pass on. You go to an internship, you do what you got to do, you get good with the person that's over you and then pass you on to the next job. No matter whether your job is laying you off or not, they had connections to just pass you off and you just became a pass off till you got, you know, stable enough to at least wherever you went from, you came right. with some other accolades that made you more secure to your next job. You know what I mean? And that's all it was going for me. In my case, I got caught. You know what I mean? So I had to deal with it, but nails was like that shit. It was like this. It's either, if, if I didn't catch on to it at that moment, boom. So um, I gave it to her. I gave her the amount. I ran to the ATM. Well, to be specific, I ran outside to the Bank of America right under the bridge. If you want that, you from have someone, you know what's up. Came back, ran to her. I just gave her the envelope. I went through the teller. I didn't even go through the ATM. I gave her the teller. Hey, the envelope. So you're not serious. I so I'll see you tomorrow at, um, at 1230. I'll never forget that. And I showed up at 1235 and she was gone. Right, late, late, you must not take this serious. You think I'm playing with my time? And it was that introduction that made me take her serious. And I, I didn't talk back. I laid my ego outside. And I just said, okay, I just was a puppy. Like, just teach me. You did. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did, she taught me. When she taught me, she taught me. And she still teaches to this day. I had a boom in school the whole nine. But I was definitely one of them students. You did. Like, she got students, but yeah, you dig. I guarantee you. You, I'm. Yeah, I'm that. You dig. And I, 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 I give it. If I could hug her to this day, if I could see her to this day, I, mean, I don't know. If we beefing or whatever. Our beef is on some Gucci Jeezy shit in the nail world. <laughs> if you understand the story, like 
you know, like we like it's like it, I guarantee if I see it, it's like the like the the bond that we had over this nail shit, it was like like it was it was crazy, you know what I mean? Because if you had somebody that seen you where you was and they introduced you to a whole nother hustle, that's like a that's some popping cherry ass shit there, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Man. I I can't only do I got her uh I got her I got her salon tatted on me. As soon as we was done with the uh with learning how to do acrylic, I said I'd be back. Ran upstairs. Uh we, it's a it's some tat shit that going upstairs. Uh, you know, uh in Iverson. And I just got that shit tatted and I was in. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I was just so like what were you Fine. thinking, like, when you were, that first day that you went back and she was showing you that, that five-hour period, like, what was going through your head? Like, am I really sitting here learning how to do nails? Like, what was going that, on? That's the equivalent to, um, and this is the anime for anybody that's watching. If anybody's a Dragon Ball Z fan, they understand the importance of, um, understand the importance of the, uh, the hyperbolic time change. And the hyperbolic time chamber is what Goku and Vegeta went in where they trained against numerous enemies. But what they did in a day was probably equivalent to like 10 years. So if you could take this analogy, when I went behind that petition, what I did in five hours was the equivalent to what I was supposed to be doing in like years. I wasted my time doing X, Y, and Z and I finally found my purpose. Never thought in a billion fucking years it was nails, but shit, I ain't gonna complain, it panned out. Yeah. So in five hours, I got a lifetime worth of game that has stuck with me for the past two years. And I haven't done anything else in the past two years but nails. If you talk to me, I, I can't go on dates. I can't court, I can't do that right now because if you do, we're out on a date, guess what? So what's going on? I'm gonna talk about Nails. I'm gonna tell you everything that's going on because I figured the only way to really become it as something, you gotta be consumed by it. It has to like, if I don't do nails within like, if I'm not practicing my hand, if I'm doing something, my stomach started. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's not part of people necessarily call that passion, but those are the precursors to some things that you know is gonna keep you rooted in this shit. Mm-hmm. You do, You just gotta keep feeding it. So um, it worked. After those five hours, like I said, she um, she said, what you going to do with it? How you going to sell it? <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go to somebody's house. I'm gonna somewhere. I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it. There's no way I pay what I'm going to pay. Now, I'm not going to take this to sell it. She said, don't worry about that. Why don't you just uh, why don't you get that table right there? Um, why don't you just like break that table for me for X amount? you know, a week and we can take it from there. I said, all right, cool. So I ran to the same ATM, <laughs> Bank of America, right under the bridge, you know what's going on. And um, I took out a month's work and I gave it to her. And I said, I see you in uh, 48 hours. For 48 hours, I had this sign made. I had some shirts going down. I had a, I had a lot of um, branding material for some mm-hmm. things that wasn't even a friend yet. Nintendo's table. Um, I did the whole pop up scene thing back when it was a pop up scene, and uh, my name was Nintendo, and I had a table, and this is what I offered. And at that time, it was still kind of buzzing, so I just took that table and put nails on it. So mm-hmm. everybody that came for me for that converted over to the nails. Nice. So that was a chain of clientele that I was able to tap into. Remember when I told you that nobody in that salon did Mandy's and Petty's? Right. I thought that was so weird. <laughs> cool. And look how it, it, this is how it played out. The pedicure chair was untouched. And she. Th- these were the rules. Like, you had access to everything in the salon. You know what I mean? I say including the pedicure chair, to everything. And I remember everybody don't do Mandy's or Petty's. I looked at the average jail Mandy was 42. And the jail Petty was average going like 45 to 55. I said, bump it. I got muscles and I, I could make up for the massage. Mm-hmm. I might can't paint right now, but I can make up for the massage. So I went on YouTube, seeing how it was done, came back. I was doing petties, but I was doing them jumps. I wasn't putting no base coat down. And I wasn't putting no top coat down. I was just putting straight color. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And with that shit, it just made me say, you know what? If I'm going to stick with it this long, like it's going to have to work. 
You know what I'm saying? So it worked. You know, these women was coming, they was paying what I was asking for. And they was like, tip. I was like, no tip. There's no reason why you should be tipping these pedicures. Two, three hours, like I put a full set on. I wasn't putting no bond down. These women was coming back with their full sets in their hand. Like, like I was giving more money back, but you know what? It's I didn't see it as L. I just didn't see it as L's. I was just like, I'm actually doing nails right now. So <laughs> I don't even care the fact that you sat right here and let me finish. Mm-hmm. It's enough. <clears throat> so um fast forward, drama, 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 nothing for that's some behind the scenes stuff. Um, I stopped doing nails at that spot. And um, I had saved up enough capital to put myself through nail school. So I had drove up, I, at that time I had a suspended license that on that. I drove all the way up to uh, Howard County, Baltimore, or what have you, to Shantae School of Creative Nails. And I, um, I had $2,700 cash. And I, um, I, I called her, you know, I had a time say, I just wanna just, just put me anywhere. I just need to get my license. I just need to, I just want to be legit so I can go anywhere and do nails because I didn't have nowhere to do nails out of the, the situation. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to school. I gave him cash and I just was like, can you give me like $5 back so I can get gas to go home? Because I literally just gave you the last of my money for this nail shit. Yeah. And he gave me $20, man. And I, I did get pulled over, but all of the times I went back to school, I got pulled over. And the police pulled me over and I got a ticket after ticket and I would walk from where I got pulled over on the turnpike to school. By the mm-hmm. time I showed up to school, uh, class of course was over, but I would make up by doing pedicures because it, it turned back into a salon at the end of the day. So I would do pedicures for mm-hmm. free and I would um, I would just take my test. I would make sure throughout everything I was doing throughout the day, I studied to be able to take a test to get me to the next chapter, whether I was able to, you know, but um, she put me through hell. Going through the, it that route, I had a lot more hell to go through than the average student. Psychologically, financially, like it was just so much going on. You know what I mean? So I just knew it was a light at the end of the tunnel. Nail school's over, everything goes cool, cool, cool. And I get a call from a salon out in Rockville called uh, Mavana Nails and Wax. And they gave me a gig. I, um, I started in July. It was crazy how it just intercepted with after. Um, you know, after nail school happened, and I worked every day from July to February. I never took a day off. Yeah. I never took a day off ever. I, my aunt died the whole night. And I didn't go to funerals. I worked there every single solitary day. There were workers that came, workers that left, but I was there every single solitary day. I want to say the last day I was there, it was February 16th, 17th. Um, I would just come in and open some days, some days it wouldn't even be, be worked in. But, uh, I, Two white guys came in behind me that day and they was like, uh, yeah, you've been watching you the past couple of days, man. You you really come in here and you you do it. You know what I mean? But uh, like, do you know what's getting ready to go down? I was like, nah, they like, you're getting ready to auction all this stuff off. I'm like, what you mean? Like, I don't think you know this spot about the before clothes. You know what I mean? So we gonna need you to get your stuff and anything else you want out of here, out of here, but you got 20 minutes to do it. Me being in there every day, all day, from <clears> over <throat> the close, after hours, I would daydream, like, if the, the end of the world happened, like, what would I take? You know what I mean? I rehearsed it in my head every day. This was the day that we was we was in full action. Uh-huh. I took, so when I, when I called him and told him what was going on, they kind of, the owner, she, like, played it off like she didn't know, but she was like, you know, whatever you want, you could have, I was like, damn, I ain't gonna get paid, whatever, but. It's got to be a part of the plan. It got to be. It's too sweet. So fuck it. This is where liability and asset, this is where that lesson really plays a big factor. Mm-hmm. So I went to the jail line and I, I grabbed out to my whole house, everything. I took, when I tell you, anything that I thought, I just, I took so much stuff in like five minutes that the guys that thought what I couldn't get in 20, they started helping me get more stuff. <laughs> When I was done, I filled my little Honda up. I drove that drink back home to my little spot and I had an empty apartment full of nail shit. I know that's right. I didn't know what to do with it. And let's just say two and a half weeks, three and a half weeks later, Corona hit. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Corona hit. I'll never forget it. Like it was that is night and day. And it was at that point where doing nails was illegal. 
you couldn't do nails. If you was doing nails, like anything that came with that, you might have been snatched. Wow. So you had people doing out the house and everything. So my mom is a mortician and she has access to some things that could really protect me from what the what the world was didn't think it could handle. And um, she brought me mad gloves, mm. mad masks, like I'm sitting on a mountain of it. And at that time I was sitting on so much of it that I could sell a box of masks for $35, $40, sometimes, you know, you know how I raised at that time. Yeah. But um, it worked in favor. So um, I went door to door doing patties. I sent my stuff to DMV Hoods and News. We did 50,000 views on that one video saying, don't tell nobody, but tell somebody. Yeah. And the caliber of my pedicures was unmatched because of everything that I received from the salon that had closed down. The buffers that I had, it was too, my tools were too professional to say, He's not it. But the only thing that made it unprofessional was it was a Tupperware bin I did my pedicures in. Mm -hmm. And I would put a pedicure liner in it, but it got done. Make a long story short, I did that from March to about, I'm going to say about maybe May. I got, I had got to a, um, a house call that I was like, yo, this is different. It was an empty apartment. They did um, esthetician work out of it and when I was when I was done, I only I, I came for one client. When I was done, I had like maybe eight people done. They kept calling people, and at that time, like I was like, I got my last for the day, so let's do it. She was like, if it's like this every day, why don't you just stay here? You know what I mean? Pay me fifty dollars a day, and we we'll just figure out the rest from there. If you can see how I go when it comes to paying people off, I'm not gonna give it to you by the day. I'm gonna give it to you by the month. Mm -hmm. So I gave her that by the month, and um, I came back the next day. And I stayed there for about, about a month and a half. And what I learned there was, I was paying y'all rent. $50 times, i never forget it. We was drinking one day and I was like, yo, how much the rent is? And they said like 15 something. <laughs> I never got it. You do the carry the... Eh, but I was like, all right, cool. But instead of like, remember I told you about my emotions and everything, instead of when you're dealing with business, like, bump it. if you got me, you got me. But mm -hmm. you're not going to give me the next month. I just, you know, part of ways professionally. You know what I mean? Everything is cool, everything. Because I had saved capital. I, when it came, when I started doing nails, I knew. The number one rule with doing this is don't spend no money for until you know. Because your rear is crazy. If you're going to get anything from Naja Nails, because that's the closest, 200, 250 plus. That's your rear. You're mm -hmm. not anything less. Mm -hmm. Period. Any nail take a tip. Then that's on a minimum. If you want, if you really doing it, yeah, it could range. So at that particular time, I said, you know what, bump it. I could afford a salon suite. I got a salon suite. That thing was jumping like crazy. And the only thing that they liked me about was if they said I stayed too late, I would come super, super early. Mm -hmm. And if they said I came super, super early, I ended up staying too late. And I just wanted to be 24 hours because that's all I was doing during pandemic. I was, my, my lights were suspended, so I was lifting everywhere. If I lifted to your house and they knew I was lifted, they tried to get me drunk, whatever, cool, cool, cool. But I was finishing four or five pedicures before I left the house. And we right. did that all night. So all of that capital we raised, I paid off a salon suite. And then my school called me and was like, yo, we got some pedicure chairs for sale. And I was like, uh, wow. All right. <laughs> all right, bet. Uh, and I bought it. And you have a lot of favor. <sighs> like people but really I, be looking out for you. If I did not save, but this is the thing, if I didn't save my money, I wouldn't have been in a position to be able to elevate my business to where people would take me serious. Because remember, we was doing pedicures out of a Tupperware bin for months. Mm -hmm. So I dreamed. I, I, I like I, this was this was the 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 bins for me at that time. And um, I, I'll never forget it. I can't, I been it to her. Boom, here. And she had that thing shipped to me. I ain't know how I hook it up. It ain't told no instruction manual, nothing. <laughs> I was just like, it's. <laughs> and uh, I snuck the joint in, and one of the girls that did here at this lawsuit was like, oh, I was like, please don't tell the landlord because if he see this, he gonna try to like up my shit because he gonna think I'm using my water when I'm not. So she was like, you do my toes, I'm gonna say nothing. I did her, of course. She didn't say nothing. He didn't find out for weeks. He came in, seen that joke, and it was a wrap. He was like, yo, you got to go. 
I can't, nah, like that's a shampoo bowl that you done just moved to the side and put a pedicure shit in. It worked though, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it worked. But um, when he moved me out, I was like, all right, bam, bump it. Mm. Um, my chair was in the parking lot. I was sitting in the parking lot in my chair and I just looked across the street and I seen another apartment. I'm not gonna name the apartment, but I seen the apartment. I ran over there and I um, inquired about a studio and I got that joint. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Got the joint. Ran, it was a Home Depot next door to the apartment. Ran, got a little orange bed, put my pedicure chair on it, ran it across the street, and I hooked that joint up. I hooked that joint up to the garbage disposal. Like, like my sub pump, like, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, my sub pump comes from the garbage disposal. Listen, that joint hooked to the sink. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized that, yo, I could hook this chair up anywhere, it was a wrap. So I stayed in that joint in that particular spot for like two, three months. Got some noise complaints because I'm 24 hours. I don't like literally, if you want to get your nails done at any time, like they know what's up. I'm up. Let's do it. That's all we're about. Mm -hmm. Caused some noise complaints. And uh, that's how I got at my t top secret location I am now. Nice. So that's been two years worth of doing nails every single solitary day. Whatever I learned, if you literally stick with something every day, the rabbit hole gets broader and broader and wider and wider and it gets brighter and brighter. And at the end of the tunnel, it only gets bright because you went through so much darkness that the amount of brightness that you went through, your eyes can't even handle what you're going to go through once you get through that light. It's more to it than that. You know what I'm saying? And this journey has been, it's, it's the best thing. I wish I was doing this at 18. If I quit this. I would, have been, I would have been a millionaire by now. I'm 29 going on 30. 18 to now? Yeah. In two years, I would have... So that's the only thing I do get mad about. But they say you get everything you're supposed to. Yeah, of course. You wouldn't have known what to do with that at 18, making all that money. So much, though. I'm a little windy. Sorry for talking so much. I know. You're good. <laughs> I would love to know, like, what did your family and friends... Like, what was their initial response when you told them that you were going to do nails? I hope you enjoyed part one of the Friends and Beauty podcast interview with Nintendo. Be sure to meet us over on part two as we continue the conversation. Thanks for listening to the Friends and Beauty podcast. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this episode with at least one friend in beauty and subscribe, rate and review on Apple Podcasts so that other Friends and Beauty can find this show. Plus, we'd love to hear your feedback. Connect with us on all social media platforms at Friends and Beauty hashtag friends and beauty to join the conversation and join our friends and beauty facebook community to stay connected talk to you soon